Thank you so much for the blanket. I feel warmer. I feel Thank excited. You. Dude, me too. How have, have you been? Good. Um, in a little bit of pain, but I'm okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to give you little massages. Little hand massages. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you so much. That helps but a lot. You, <laughs> you and my sister both say that I suck at massages. Though. You do. I'm sorry. <laughs> you do, but that's actually not the topic of the day. <laughs> but in case anybody cared to, to know. I suck. So... <laughs> Chelly, mm-hmm. do you think that <laughs> Harry Styles feels threatened? I mean, first of all, he's Harry Styles. Mm. Everyone knows who he is. Yes, that's so, true. So I feel like he knew. You know, going into his career, he's like, everyone's going to use, everyone's going to use my face. I don't fame. think so because. I speak in an <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. And I tried a little bit, but I, I suck at that accent. <laughs> I don't think so because. I don't know exactly what year One Direction were we were formed. Teenagers, <laughs> we I remember that we were teenagers, but I don't know how uh, how the media perceived fan fiction at the time. I don't think they knew anything about it, or not really. I anyway, feel that's interesting that you bring that up. I remember when One Direction was formed, they were just five guys that went on The Voice. Oh my right? god, five guys, <laughs> not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> so people that aren't in like the united states are gonna be like what the fuck five guys is like a ham- hamburger chain five guys burgers and burgers yes <laughs> and so, <friendships. laughs> so i think when he went on this with his friends i think he thought he was gonna get the fame that people get after they're on american idol where it's like yeah you're big for a bit but that's kind of then you can kind of do your independent stuff did you watch them when they were in American Idol? I didn't, but I remember the hype of it. Yeah, and same. I feel like I wasn't there, but I was like adjacent to it. But that <laughs> on was the around, side. That was around the same, not the same year, but around the same time when Justin Bieber kind of blew up. Was so it? Boy bands at that time just all, mm-hmm. like it became a huge thing again, yeah. which because it kind of died down for a bit it did right it yeah. was like a trend uh before our time mm-hmm. but then it came back yep there has always been people rewriting stories mm-hmm. and th- there's like that one saying i forget who it was like this one dude that said it Someone... <laughs> that's my citing <laughs> <laughs> that's my citation <laughs> this one dude had once said <laughs> shout out to that one dude that every every piece of art is inspired by other art yeah so originality yeah, although it too. exists it's like we all get inspiration from something mm-hmm. even no matter how much you deviate it mm-hmm. it's, it comes from something that and you're aware of i think fan fiction didn't really start blowing up well maybe i'm wrong but i don't think it really started blowing up until the <laughs> super who lock times do you remember <gasps> that dude it was huge it was big. supernatural Super had like a cool. very active Lock. like fan fiction thing yeah sure they, locked it they were like Doctor number Who. one on ao3 for the longest time dude they were number one on fanfiction.net like that's my God, <laughs> shout out um it's so crazy to think about because i really don't think that at least celebrities i don't yeah. think that celebrity because they work so much i'm assuming mm-hmm. i don't think they're aware of fan fiction well back then yeah so i don't think the harry styles would have been like oh let me just pose like this <laughs> because yeah. and it and well, maybe it's weird to me i don't know I, I feel like to an extent because they get social media trained oh, i feel like true. to an extent you know that people are going to take it far but then like the shipping amongst the group started happening oh dude but you know what's weird <sighs> mm. maybe not weird i don't know what word to use i feel like i don't want to be a, a annoying I was never really into boy bands before K-pop. Okay. K-pop was kind of what introduced me to boy boy groups. I feel like in K-pop, that's that's more like pushed by management. Yeah. Like, I need you to be all over each other. The girls will eat this up. Mm-hmm. But I don't know how, how uh, I guess, One Direction's management would, would see that. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know how far it went because 
both you and I weren't in that fandom. No. At all. So I don't. <laughs> but but then when we finally, because I don't know if I told you, I told you this. Remember my senior year of high school, one of my friends, oh God. We, like, we were very close, but he was like, I have a deep, dark secret. Oh, I was like, God. You can tell me. You can tell me <laughs> I do fun. remember this. And it turned out he was really into reading Your Name X Harry Style fan fiction. God, uh-huh. and he was just like, I'm so, I just need someone to talk to about it. And so I would read them with him. And you're such a good friend. <laughs> you're so fucking sweet. I had no idea who Harry Styles was. <laughs> so I was like, mm, okay. He I'm trying to think weird. that if I was like in college or were you younger than that? I was in high school. It was my oh, first year high of school. Hi- okay. Or last year of high school. Okay. I'm trying to think that if I was in high school and somebody was like, hey, I really like Dude. your name, Justin Bieber, I would just be like, cool mm. but i'm i don't want to read this no thank you, no, thank you. That, I, that's a no for me i'm too busy reading art <laughs> In, In, inuyasha and kagome fan fiction i can't i'm too busy uh, sorry. sorry i'm reading literature okay <laughs> i'm reading glee fanfics okay so don't don't even oh my god don't even get me started with the glee fanfics i knew this girl too that was super into um clean was that their name their ship name? yeah clean it was blaine and kurt <laughs> kurt they, yes. yeah clean oh my and god and so she would send me fanfics too and i'm over here dude i was working like a nine to five i was like okay i gotta get hit the harry styles i gotta hit the fucking <laughs> glee like you were hitting all of these <laughs> angles i know um Ugh. okay but i just i feel like I never read any claim fan fiction. I was really into Glee, but I got a few. <laughs> really? Yeah, I got a okay. few. Okay. That's so funny that we're talking about this now because I feel like yesterday I just had like a sense of nostalgia after reading the book we're about to talk about. And uh-huh. I was like, I, I wonder if the fan fiction I used to read, they're still up. So I had to go into my oh, old wow. fan fiction profile. Uh-huh. I didn't remember my username. I didn't remember my password. <laughs> so I was like, how the fuck do I find Where do them? I start? Uh-huh. Yeah. So then I was like, I our mutual friend, the one who was really into K pop too. Yeah. I was like, I know that we must have sent each other something with our names in it. And so I looked through all of my old Facebook messages with her and I'm like, fuck, what's the name? And then I finally saw you it and were I'm like in the trenches. I was in the trenches. Oh dude. my god. I was But you found it. it. I found it. I've had moments where I same thing where I'll have nostalgia and I'll look fanfics mm-hmm. up, but they're gone. Yeah, no, dude, the one I wanted to read yesterday, Mm -hmm. it's just not, I don't even think the author's there anymore because I couldn't find any trace of it. So then Mm -hmm. I found this one website. I went super deep yesterday. So it was four in the morning. I found this, I think it's still open on my computer. It was a website that was like a directory of all of the fan fiction under that trope and that ship. And no fucking way. It was like breaking it down like, oh, for this one, this is the little summary of it. If you're looking for somewhere, uh, this person is uh, affectionate, the grumpy ex sunshine. That's right here. If you're looking for, and it broke it down, and I was in the trenches. I can't believe I was looking. People are so nice to just like take the time out of their Doing lives. God's work. No, seriously, dude. It, they're the real angels on earth. <laughs> Or, like, just people on Reddit who are super, like, meticulous about, like, yep. for example, like, when, when I was looking into TVs, yeah. like, there's people who, like, break things down that I didn't even think about yeah. in terms of, like, what I need in a TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. People take pride in their art, in their work. But um, all that being said, I think that when, now that boy bands are really big again. Mm-hmm. Once it's, again. It's all type of boy bands mm-hmm. now. Um, I think that it. It really sucks because people go into this. I'm guessing that Harry Styles went into this wanting <laughs> to do music. You know, that was his biggest thing. Oh, we're still talking about Harry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I Because I going back to what we were originally talking about, uh-huh. I think he went into this was just like, I love music. I love friends. So he's <laughs> like over here wanting to do music. I but I don't think he was ready for, for what was attached to yeah. that. So Charlie... Do you think that us discussing another mm. story involving Harry Styles or uh, inspiration? Hayes, yeah. Hayes, yes. Do you think that this could fix your life? I do. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Welcome to another episode of the Book Fix Podcast, a podcast where we fix lives one book at a time. I'm your host, Yahaira. And I'm your host, Chelly. And today we are going to be talking about 
a um, Harry Styles fan fiction so, turned hold on book. No, what? Apparently, it's not a fan fiction though. Oh, what? I think. Okay, this is written by Robin. I was gonna look up her name. Robin Lee. Robin Lee. When I looked up whether this was a fan fiction originally, every answer I got was that it's like complicated. That I think she was just inspired mm. by like boy bands, more specifically Harry, Harry Styles. Mm-hmm. So I don't think she actually posted this as a your name, but I could be wrong. Oh. Sound off in the comments. Let me know. Well, like. <laughs> To to start off with that, you sent me an article. Didn't she say that she wanted to make this story like people of color? So I didn't. <laughs> I was supposed to read that article. Oh, my God. I feel bad that I didn't. Sometimes I'll send people things and I'll be like, I'll get back to this. Okay. Um, From what I understood, I thought that she she would write people of color or it wanted wasn't to. Getting- yeah, it wasn't getting a like traction. So that's how I understood the article. OK, no, I think you're right. Um, that sucks. Yeah. That really sucks. Mm-hmm. And it sucks that because this is just connected to it might be about Harry. Maybe, possibly. Come on. Look know, look at know. him. It was so funny because oh, okay. Um this is definitely um inspired by One Direction. One thousand <laughs> percent. I love the message that you sent me at n- last night about <laughs> it. One? The fact that all of the boy band like people they have different names except for Liam. Except for Liam. <laughs> Do you think it's because Liam is such a... Mm, it's Liam. <laughs> no, what I imagined before I watched the movie, uh-huh. I thought they were all going to be played by different people, but that was just going to be Liam. It's just Liam. This is like a, an alternate world where he, he went with them on The Voice. <laughs> He's still here. Um, I do want to make a comment, though. Okay. So I don't know what you want to discuss more, the book or the movie. I feel like they're <sighs> both kind of different. They are, different vibes honestly it's so funny because like one of my friends last week she watched this movie and she sent me such a long audio note and she was so speechless like she was like and she didn't want to spoil it speechless she knew, but also a long audio note but she but it's because she knew that um no dude it was a lot of silence it was funny because she was just like wow okay. oh wait hold on i need me a yeah. so she was just trying to like tell me like how much she loved this movie Mm -hmm. and how much it like moved her and so when i read the book i was like fuck yeah it moved me too and then i watched and i and i i messaged her i was like yeah that was really good i didn't want to tell her too much Mm -hmm. and then i watched the movie and i'm like whoa shit never mind we we were both (laughs) feeling different things Mm -hmm. um so i just want to start off by saying that the way that the stories are told are very different yes i don't think you can have a meet and greet at coachella no there's no i've never heard of anyone no. telling me oh that's gotta... the unsafest thing yeah there should be people on drugs yeah like, exactly in the meet and greet so in the book uh the ex-husband daniel won like a raffle or something no where... it was an auction oh it was an auction where August Moon, the the boy band, they were already on tour. Mm -hmm. And so he was going to gift the daughter, Izzy, uh, like tickets to the tour, but also backstage passes for the the meet and greet. But it was like for her and her friends and Solen, which is the main character. The mom. Yeah, the mom. So just to kind of uh, give a little bit of back story to these characters. Solen and Daniel are divorced Mm -hmm. in the book. And it's not mentioned why, like Mm -hmm. when and why it happened. But what we know is that Daniel has moved on and he has been dating Ava. And Mm -hmm. Ava is 10 years younger than him. Yeah. And so then, although she's more like, she won't really talk about it in the book. It bothers her. You can tell it bugs her. There, There were moments where, I don't know, like even when she would start, she was already talking to Hayes. And something would happen with Daniel where she would be like, well, he just ruined our marriage. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I do understand the feelings. But I don't know. Like, I thought I thought she would have been, like, more so detached mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. because he was so moved on. And I think he had been moved on for a while. Yeah. Daniel, I mean. He had. Um, in the book, too, it's very different, the relationship that Daniel and Solen have. Yeah. It's not caring at all. It's very distant, but also, like... 
but they're both there for the daughter, so they're willing to. But I felt like Book Daniel was way more supportive. You think so? <laughs> Maybe supportive isn't the right word because he was kind of like rude. But I remember there was a scene where he was like, "I wish you would have just told me. I wish you would have just opened I think, up." <laughs> I think um, with Book Daniel, this divorce was very like a mutual thing. Mm. So it's not like because they it, it did mention cheating, yeah, yeah. It it wasn't because I feel like when people get a divorce and it's mutual, it's not that you don't love the person; it's that you don't love them to the capacity that you did before. Yeah, like you things know? are different, and you can't get back to where you were before. Mm-hmm. But again, so Daniel was very different because in the fucking movie, he was like a bitch. Yeah, he even was. his. Uh, I don't know if Ava and him were married. I don't under, I don't no, know. They what, were together though. Okay, I think they were just like together for a while. So basically, he ended up cheating on Solen with Ava, who was the secretary in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I kind of hate that in the movie they don't emphasize the age difference like they say it like once Mm -hmm. but i like that in the book it's kind of making like a commentary on oh so you have a problem with the age gap between solen and hayes i was gonna call him harry um but you don't have a problem with daniel and ava Mm -hmm. i like that it had that aspect aspect of it in the book but in the movie it was kind of just like eh, whatever yeah so that's just Solen. That's that's her character. So Solen, um, she was going to go in the book. She was going to go on like a camp retreat to go draw and like art. Away. No, that was the movie. No, the movie she was going to go camping, just camping. Yeah. But then in the in the book, she was going to go like to an art thing for it was like an ex- excursion. Ex- uh huh. Yeah. So in both, it gets fucked up because Daniel just doesn't know how to follow through with his kids. And broken promises yeah. that bitch but can i just say i'm sad that they made izzy older in the movie really? yeah because i don't know to me it makes more sense why this would be a bigger deal if you're younger it because when more yeah because if you're a child you're just like what my mother is dating my my crush like you know like i don't yeah, know because she was an eighth grader so that makes her a 13 14 mm-hmm. and in the in the movie she was 16 sophomore so she had a few more years of school mm-hmm. um yeah it, did, it made it very different when mm-hmm. i when i um saw that i was like wait a minute what does that mean for when when things get wild mm-hmm. like is she gonna take it to heart like eighth grade izzy did mm-hmm. or is it gonna be different mm-hmm. but they go to this meet and greet um in the book it is it makes more sense because we've been to meet and greets like that where it's yeah. like you go, you see them perform, but they're just like not dressed up. They're just kind of doing sound check. Mm-hmm. And then you can go and take a picture with them. And um, when they do that, so Len sees Hayes for the first time and he's just like, hey, is, that's me. Hey, so- <laughs> Hayes. <laughs> that's so dumb. But he's just kind of like wow supportive mom right here <laughs> love that no well, but doing? no he was like are you the older sister oh my god i forgot about and that. she was like no i'm the mom and he was like my mom doesn't look like that oh my god dude and then that part where it was like <laughs> oh fuck what how did he say it i just feel like some things that hayes said made him feel so young and he was really young he was 20 yeah in the book in I the movie, like he 24. Younger. He seemed younger in the movie to me. Really? In the book, he just seemed like a fan fiction boyfriend. Really? Like that, just the type of things he would say. That's a that's a Harry Styles if I've ever seen. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm I'm talking about like the jokes that he would make. Oh yeah. Where I I would read it and I'd be like, that's not funny, and it's also like weird. Yeah. You know. But so then would be like, mm, yeah. No, he, okay. he had brought up. It was so obvious that he was flirting with her because. Uh, she was like, yeah, I brought my my kids because or I brought my kid Izzy because her father got this auction stuff, whatever. And he was like, interesting. Her father, not your husband. Is that is that kind of <laughs> what I'm getting out of this? It's because she made a comment about I don't know how she addressed him. I think she addressed him as Izzy's dad. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, so not your husband. <laughs> love this book if every time she had made comments like that he would just freak out i know i like that 
It was like the screaming in the hand. I like that one part where um, she made a comment how his fans are super loud or something mm-hmm. about the, the fans being real, real passionate. Yeah. when they were performing and he gave her the advice of like oh just wear like earmuffs or, or earphones or something the noise or headphones ones, yeah. yeah and she he said next time and she was like next time there's always a next mm-hmm. time is what he said yeah i thought that part was cute but in this little meet and greet uh she basically says like hey uh oh because he's asking her things about her oh no 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 they're, they're just kind of there's like a mutual attraction, mm-hmm. but it ends at that. And then he tells Izzy, he goes up to the girls because she's with her friends and is like, hey, um, we're going to have like a little after party. If you girls wanted to stay, it'd be so fun. Pause and- right there. If a guy were to say after party, I would immediately imagine like beer, drugs. It's funny. <laughs> a little eighth grader like, oh, my God. What is going on back here? Is like Mario Kart or something? yeah so good okay but then that happens they leave the rest of the concert happens okay Mm -hmm. i want to bring up the movie because the movie it happens at coachella and at this point izzy is 16 and august moon was a boy band she was into when she was 10 so she's not really like super into them and they're not really they're making music but they're kind of like at a lull (laughs) yeah so they're not what they used to be (laughs) but they they're going for nostalgia Mm -hmm. and at first izzy's very like whatever you know it's just but her friends are like excited even but even she was singing to the songs in the car Mm -hmm. like she was trying to play it off but she was excited Mm -hmm. and so when they're doing the meet and greet the signing or no before the meet and greet um the mom is walking around and it's funny because she goes to like this little sitting area oh yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's part because she's literally it's like i don't know why she's sitting there but she's just sitting there pulls out a book mm-hmm. i'm like yeah she's not like all the uh, these other mm, girls a little reader there <laughs> okay but yeah. i wish she would i wish she would have done that when um hayes was performing just Dude. like pulled out the book just like i don't give a fuck. but it was funny because um there was a mom that was also sitting there and she was like which is so, your favorite so, no but she was like so uh when were you mooned and she was like what the fuck? oh <laughs> yeah me? mooned like, yeah I, wh- wh- which one's your favorite oh i'm sorry your daughter's favorite and then she's like i'm gonna go where are the restrooms it's like oh yeah the vip ones are over here mm. and totally i guess she just has no direction she like saw- no direction please oh, what? Oh. <laughs> she's got one direction no she- <laughs> no so she comes out of this little little tent i don't know what it was yeah all of these fucking trailers are all just lined up in front of her i don't understand this because where's security <laughs> Where, i know dude one security person came out and she was like oh that must be the restroom it's like no these are trailers yeah and i'm guessing i don't know that it doesn't make any sense to me because i don't think coachella is set up like that i don't think you could just walk in and be like oh no, uh, you acdc and- what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> but no definitely not she goes in and it, um it's a trailer it's like a band's trailer mm-hmm. and she's just waiting by the door and Hayes. The love interest august moon's main singer comes out and he's like uh, uh, hi he's just like hi and she's like hi you, excuse me can i do you mind some of us have to use the bathroom <laughs> people these days and so then she goes in goes to the restroom comes out and he's just sitting in like the couch area yeah eating an and apple. she's like so are you one of those like weirdos like the ones the asmr ones that like to listen to people pee because mm-hmm. that's disgusting and she's like about to go off on him and he's like this is my trailer i'm one of the <laughs> i'm i am august moon you know august moon <laughs> august up there that's me that's me i just i fucking love that it's just so easy it's just <laughs> you just have to pretend like you don't fucking know them and they're like wait never met anyone like you (laughs) but it was so funny because like he was so at at this point he felt very young to me because he was just like we got drinks like there's soda there's kombucha it's kind of like salad um there's this and then no it's because he knew that she was older so he's like she doesn't know what kombucha is no but it was funny because someone came in and was like do you need help getting dressed (laughs) you need some some help with your body <laughs> He's wearing like the sketchers, you know, the Velcro one. I got it, Jody. Got him. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, you know what? 
you have a point i literally didn't even think about that i took that more so as um i'm pretty sure artists have very little freedom to do anything mm. so that's why she was like do you need help getting dressed because here's your fucking outfit yeah no i took it as just like he's big baby and i'm like big baby big okay. diaper but then uh Coachella happens and the only the biggest difference is that when he's performing he decides to perform a love song oh my god okay so basically what happens is they're performing and they start singing a song and then he's like wait guys cut the music dead ass and then then they all just like huddle up all the all the august moon boys you know they just huddle up just whispering he comes out he's like Okay, guys, I, we were going to sing this other song, but I met someone special. But on God, I met someone. <laughs> on God. <laughs> no cap. Like, someone's literally goaded in the, in the fucking audience right now. And I could definitely see her <laughs> in this <laughs> sea of people. Um, so, yeah, then he performs, like, this, like, love song. <laughs> like, I think it's really funny, the age difference, though. Because he, he is a Gen Zer. No, not, is he? Yeah, he would be making those jokes. <sighs> Yeah. Had it been this time. Yeah, had it been the, like for this time. On yeah. God. On yeah. God. Cap. Okay. So, I mean, no cap. No cap. Sorry, All cap. No cap. <laughs> <laughs> so then um he performs it and um I don't remember when it happens. I think it's when they're doing the signing. Uh Lizzie's or Izzy's friends bring up like, hey, my mom owns a an art thing if you want to well, go see it in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, because basically what Solon does is she is like an art person. Yeah. Like, she- but the, in in the book it was her and her friend that yeah. made the art thing, but in the movie it's just her. Uh huh. So um, she just sells art. She's an art girly. What I appreciated about the first, like the book, I don't think he goes and buys art the first time. I think he literally goes and is like, "Hey." He just goes to see her. Hey. He shows up at her work. Mm-hmm. like every normal man should do yeah and he's like hey girl you remember me mm-hmm. august moon remember august hey. moon i'm, I'm not august though i'm yeah. haze <laughs> and she's just like yeah i remember you what the hell are you doing here and he's like i just want lunch just lunch um oh and then it was cute because in the book it was like can we meet up right now and she's like no i'm literally working what about after no i have like jimmy kimmel you know yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like she yeah. she was booked basically and he was like okay but like tomorrow i can't because i have this and and so he tells her can you meet me at di- lunch tomorrow yeah and she was like well we just sold this big art thing i should treat myself so yes just lunch and they're like yep but just lunch. isn't it in like a restaurant that's like in a hotel or something yes right okay so that that's set up. But in the movie, I thought it was so funny because he walks in there and he's like, I need art. Like, I have a new place, a new pad, if you will. I have a new pad and like, no fucking art. No fucking <laughs> art. Yeah, there was no art in there. And like, I just kind of want to spice it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So one of everything. Please. <laughs> no, he literally bought everything. everything. And it was funny because she got really mad. She and did. she was like, you're buying this art that people have put their heart like blood sweat and tears by bts into <laughs> and you're just like buying it like it's apples and he's like first of all you've never seen me buy fucking apples that's really fucked up <laughs> it's really fucked Be up fucking for real like <laughs> <I'm> stop <laughs> with the fucking no gen cap. z jokes <laughs> i know so then she's just he, like he's like buying apples is the hardest decisions i ever have to make <laughs> yeah you don't know how you don't know what it's like at the whole foods mm hell no but anyway yeah so he buys all of the art and she's a little bit offended but then don't they like he's doesn't he tell her do you have any more because you just bought everything my pad is huge yeah that this is enough for the entrance <laughs> so, but then she's like well you just bought everything and he was like oh and that's really rude of me i just i literally just oh i see like he's connecting and he's like well i i still want to talk to you like i still want you to show me more and she's like, well, there's a warehouse in Glendale. Like, I could send... I He's could like, I, there. I fucking love, love Glendale. Glendale. My favorite thing is the gas station. Glendale. <laughs> so they go to Glendale. And it's it's very telling because when they go in her car, he puts the seat down. Dude, I was so scared that he was doing that because he was, like, misreading the situation. Like, I thought he just wanted... Oh, my God. Really? To fuck around. And I was like, hell no. I had oh no God. I had no thoughts, but I didn't think that. <laughs> I, I did. But then it was just because the the 
the outside of the art paparazzi. place well yeah it was full full of paparazzi or like fans or whatever yeah but then they pass by they go and um they're very attracted to each other mm-hmm. but there's a similarity in both of them it happens at different times but they talk about this one painting Mm -hmm. that solene really likes and it's um it was painted by one of her friends and it's just like in the in the movie it's like a a nature thing yeah it looks like just trees but but then it's outlined in very like vibrant colors Mm -hmm. and it's uh so len when talking about it with Hayes, she's like this makes me feel everything Mm -hmm. and she just really really likes this painting Mm -hmm. and he's just like oh okay good to know but in the movie they say like no one's willing like she's not willing to sell it like it's just yeah yeah so she has a piece that she's not willing to sell because it makes her feel everything Mm -hmm. so then um Hayes in the movie they end up going to her house to eat lunch because it's more private but they kiss fucking sandwich (laughs) <laughs> oh dude so they kiss because he's like playing a song for her and she's like oh my god hey. keep playing wait can i just say in the book <laughs> i was so i was cracking i was cracking up i couldn't fucking believe that solen would literally think oh he's just in a boy band Oh, it's it's, cool. it's just a little boy band. It's a little boy band. Because he would like talk highly of about his job. Because of course, oh, he's proud of his work. He yeah. like writes his own songs, and he would be like, "Oh, you know, maybe we'll be as big as the Beatles." And she's like, "Yeah, the Beatles, <laughs> definitely not." <laughs> I thought that part was so sad. <laughs> well, I think she valued his work more in the movie, mm-hmm. which I am appreciative of because that kind of bothered me in the book how little she valued what he did. Mm-hmm. But then how much he valued her work. Yeah. I was, And then for, for her to like not value his, it's like it kind of goes against the type of character that you're trying to portray this character to be. Yeah. But um, did we ever say her age? She is 39 going on 40. Yeah. But in the movie, she turns 40 like right after they meet. Mm-hmm. Good for her. The big four. Oh, I yeah, love oh it. God. That's peak. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so terrified. <laughs> But, um, okay, so in both of them, I don't want to keep jumping back and forth, but this is basically the same. They both have this relationship where they meet, they, like, fool around, mm-hmm. and um, then she goes home. I and then like, it's, like, following every tour yeah. place he goes to. But in the book, I feel like she was very reluctant in the beginning. Like, mm-hmm. she really did not want to, because she kept thinking, oh, this is so... Mm, like what would people say right yeah because she's almost 40 or 40 i think at this point and he, in the book he's only 20 so i think it's like crazier it, in the book it hits her more in the book mm-hmm. a lot more and um but she doesn't like she follows his tour dates but she's not involved in the tour at all no. in the book in the book no. she just meets him in different states i thought it was kind of funny because in the book it made me feel and even in the movie I'm like, you are a celebrity. Like, you're a star, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how is it that you're going everywhere without your group? Mm -hmm. Because it it just always seemed like Hayes just had time. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, whoa. I guess he (laughs) doesn't. Off season. Because even in the book, it was like, I saw you. And then three weeks later, I see you again. And it was very big on like, there's big time spans of when I don't see you. Well, I feel like in the book, she had to be the one to go like meet him. Because he was busier than her. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she would have her like clients. Because remember, in the book, he didn't buy her out. So she would have, like, clients. And then when she would have free time, then, okay, fine. Then she would go meet him at a different state or whatever. And I think it was easier for her to get away with it because Izzy, who was, like, 13, she would be, like, bouncing between Solen and the dad, Daniel. And also, she had also went to camp, but not for a whole summer. Yeah. It was, like, for a week. It was something else. Uh Um, But, yeah, it was... In the book, she was more reluctant. And I think the first time they fool around, she has like a whole freak out. Like, oh, my God, yeah. what I do? I could be your mom. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. He just goes down on her. And that was it for the first time. Yeah. And she was like freaking out. What were In your thoughts? Movie. What were your thoughts? Let's pause for a second. <sighs> okay. So I think that age gap relationships are personally not for me. 
Yeah, they're not for me I Because I think about my mentality at 20. Mm -hmm. If I was dating someone who was 40, Mm -hmm. I think you would not let me. No, I would, girl, I would lock you up. Um, I think about us as as that age too, but I also think about like my brother and your cousin, you know? Okay. Like I think about them and I think about like, what would I do if like a 40 year old or it does have to be 40. No, but I get you know, what you mean. Like the mentality that your brother's in right now and yeah. the mentality that my cousin's in right now. Yeah. Like they are not ready for this serious relationship. No. Mm-hmm. no yeah. I, I didn't even think about it like that. You're right. Um, I don't know. I think I would. And then even now, like if I reached 40, mm-hmm. um, if you if, will reach 40, when, when I reach, I'm going to live to be 140. So <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> when, when I'm 40, if I was in a relationship with a 20 year old, I don't even think I, I know it would be bad because I don't even think I'd be able to admit that to you. Yeah, no. That'd be so hard. I'm like, I don't think, I don't think, uh, <laughs> oh my God, in the book, was it the book or the movie mm-hmm. where she told her, well, she told her friend in both, but wasn't her friend like super supportive? In the movie. In the movie, right? But in the book, she wasn't? She was just kind of like, well, it's not serious. You're just fooling around, right? I'm glad you're fooling around, but just remember, oh, okay, okay, okay. you can't. This isn't something you can keep. Uh-huh. But and I it think- was such a bigger deal too in the book too because the Hayes was Izzy's favorite in yeah. the book. No, yeah, he was, wasn't he? Because she was just like, I love him. He's everything, and she had like posters of him in the room like she was super into him in the movie she was into rory i thought uh, okay i could have sworn it was somebody else but, but it, that was either like way a big thing because it was like how do you break to a kid who's currently into this group that mm-hmm. hey i'm dating that one so that's mine is he <laughs> that right there mine mine how would you feel <laughs> how would you feel if your mother started dating <laughs> dio from mexico <laughs> When I went to a concert with my mom, Happy Mother's Day. When I, oh, went, yeah. <laughs> when I went to a concert with my mom to go see Espinosa Paz. Oh yeah, I do remember that. So he's like a really big um his Hispanic musician. I don't know if he's big anymore, but he was a few. My years mom back. was really into him too. So so um there was an event where he came and it was like a, a little thing, and we were dancing. So we were like near the front, and then he was like. Todas las solteras, levanta los manos. Like all the all, all the, the single, single ladies, ladies, put your hands up. And my mom raised her hand up, and I just looked at her. And I was like, "Mom," and she's like, Ksh, yeah, she, it, "Because it. she was like, let me have this, <laughs> let me shut up." And she was like, and it wasn't. She wasn't even dancing anymore. She was just like, hand up, serious, like this one, making eye contact. <laughs> she was ready to risk it all. And honestly, I respect. <laughs> <laughs> at that age, though, did you respect it? <laughs> no, because then. You got scared. Exactly. So <laughs> my mom at that age, she was 50. Mm-hmm. And what is Espinosa Paz? Like 20? <laughs> I, I don't know their but ages. They would have had an idea of you. <laughs> they would have. They would have <laughs> that's crazy. No, but like that's to me, that's like a silly thing. Because in my mind, I can't even perceive that ever. That you know, my mom, If my mom would have been up there, I know for a fact she would have done the, the mom hands, you know, and <laughs> put them together. Hola, Espinosa. Oh, Hi. Big fan. <laughs> love you (laughs) but um it's like not a conceivable thing to me and i know that age gap relationships exist but i don't really (laughs) like this is kind of a controversial opinion to people who are age gap is okay for you for me it's like that saying that you're mature for your age oh my god i I don't like it it's so and i guess it's because my my profession too Mm -hmm. like i'm I'm in a profession where I have to protect kids from that. Yeah. So if I was for that, it's just kind of like I'm going against what I'm preaching. Yeah. So to me, age gaps, it's really hard for me to back them up if I don't if I don't agree with it, I guess. Mm-hmm. But then I guess there are age gaps where like the relationship works and great. But it's mm-hmm. just like you're in different points in your life. Mm-hmm. And if I just feel like not to be morbid, but like I would just be so consumed with the idea of death like i don't know like i would just be thinking oh my god you're you've lived longer dude it it like even 
will fuck me up now if, if mm-hmm. i'm with someone who is near my age that's still like an idea that would fuck me up mm-hmm. so if i was someone who like if i was with someone who's 20 years older than me and they coughed <laughs> weird i'd be like oh, hospital God. hospital I, right now let's go <laughs> so um i i just but, i can't imagine it and I, mostly if it's someone younger like yeah. 20 years old to me that's a child <laughs> that's a child yeah to a 40 year old yeah oh gosh so to, i just don't I could. Yeah, because I mean, I just think about what the hell do you have t- to talk about? Like, what do you have in common? Not to go off the rails on, you know, the the, the um art yeah. <laughs> that is the idea of you, but because it, like you said, it is a commentary on like age gap relationships mm-hmm. and how they're viewed differently with men and women. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you because even in the book, although although. He, hayes was willing to do the research in the things she loved so she can they can talk about it i wouldn't just want to talk about my job Mm -hmm. like there's so many layers to a person and he's over here like i you're like a flower and i unclosed you like that was no that you uh, bloomed or it was unclosed wasn't it It was like a weird word and i was like that's not a word hayes first of all i think yeah actually yeah i think you're right it was like unclosed something weird but um I'm thinking like, yeah, that's what you're saying. You don't know anything about her. Like you, you, you don't know how she was in college. You haven't asked her about how she was in school, her life being a mother. Like you don't know much about her. And honestly, she doesn't know much about you. Every time they're with each other, it really is just sex. Yeah. Literally. In the book, it was just sex Mm -hmm. for a long time. And there's this one part that I want to read that i highlighted it because i was like this is so this is literally why i don't think this is something you should like strive for you know Mm -hmm. like in my personal opinion do you i guess do whatever you want but um she tells hayes look you have a saint tropis tan and he says a what and she says there's this old suntan oil bain de soleil they had these great commercials in the 80s and i laughed suddenly and you were not born yet I wasn't, he said. And you know what? There was another part that was like that, which I fucking hated, where she was kind of going off because she was freaking out again. And she was like, you were born in the 90s. And in the 90s, I was giving people blowjobs. Oh, my God. Like, That's disgusting. <laughs> uh, uh, um, <laughs> sorry, I got to go to church. Like, that is. <laughs> no, I hated that shit. Okay. Okay. Again, this is going to be off topic, but on topic. Do you remember? I don't know if you ever saw this one thing that came out how all of these like major celebrities like mm. i don't know i don't i don't want to name anybody because i don't know for sure but let's just say like someone like shakira or someone like jennifer lopez like an a star yeah like like big but also older okay like they would date like really young guys yep so there was this joke that came out that said oh don't worry sweetheart if you haven't found the right one I mean, he's probably not born yet i was like that is disgusting that is disgusting so there was this SNL sketch where it was like, who's your second wife? And they would bring husbands on who had first wives. Oh, my God. And so it's assumed that like, you know, your first like the first one, I think, was like your first wife is going to die in a horrible accident. It's OK. Bring out your second wife. And it's just like a lady. And it's like, oh, OK. Weird <laughs> concept that you know who she is. But then mm-hmm. when it goes to other people. It'll be like, oh, you made it big in the industry. Bring out your second wife. And it's a teenager. And it's like, oh. And then the last one is like, bring out your second wife. And it's this lady. Mm -hmm. And she's pregnant. And he's like, okay, that's not too bad. But then it's like, oh, no, it's not her. It's the baby that's in her stomach. Like, it just kept getting younger and younger. And everyone in the audience was like, what the fuck is going on? Uh And it just kind of goes to show, like, it's kind of, it's gross yeah you know and it's like so it's making a, a commentary on how it's disgusting yes yeah yeah and so to me i guess because I, I don't want it to seem because we're kind of going off on this uh-huh. i don't want it to seem like i hated this book because mm-hmm. i really really liked this book mm-hmm. but just it takes me out because of my views on it yeah you know and i feel like the the book had its like enjoyable moments you know what i mean and and i appreciate it like i said earlier i appreciate that in the book you have this like conversation of like okay but the husband can be with someone younger why is it so bad that she's with someone younger like i wish the movie would have expanded on that i don't know like i wish it would have mentioned that um i like that they made Hayes older in the in the movie 
So I think I do. I do want to bring up oh. a famous age gap. Um, famous Jenna Marbles and Julian Solomita. Oh yeah, they do have an age. They gap. have a, a six year age gap, mm-hmm. and to me, like they were, they are like that. That's a pretty big age gap. That's mm-hmm. a considerable one. Mm-hmm. But to me, they are similar because they um how how do i say this i guess they just come they have like a similar mindset Mm -hmm. and to me they don't it's not it's not something that would hold back a relationship you know what i mean their age gap isn't going to create issues Mm -hmm. in their relationship i feel like when i would watch their videos i could feel that he was younger than her like I, i don't know i don't know how to say this i'm not saying it's like like the worst thing ever like i'm really not like people make it work and also you don't have to be super similar to the person you're with people make it work sometimes they prefer where the opposites attract that's cool do whatever makes you happy but um to me this is like 20 years of a difference if your issue is stemming from your age then it's not gonna work yeah like if you can't go past it Mm -hmm. then you are going to be able to go past it yeah you know so to me it's just like it's it's not gonna work yeah but i think one of the things that on top of the age gap was that solen didn't really respect (laughs) what hayes does for a living in my opinion i feel yeah in the book in my opinion like reading this i'm reading it in a way that she's like coming for him like making fun of him in a way right Mm -hmm. but i think it's supposed to be funny I don't know. Let me read you this line. She tells him, don't go falling in love with me, Hayes Campbell. He says, I'm not going to fall in love with you. I'm a rock star. We don't do that. She says, you're a boy band member. And he kind of just like smiles at it. And he says, well, I guess all bets are off then. But I'm like, isn't she making fun of you? I don't know. That's how I took it. I think after that, too, in the book, because then there's one moment like that he goes down on her and then they separate for a while and then she goes to france because he said that she needs to repay the favor like whatever and she's down like it's it's a consensual thing but then when she goes and gives him a blowjob i forget what they're talking about but then he basically says like fuck i think i might fall in love with you and she's like don't don't even say that as a joke and he totally takes it back he's like oh okay but then after that he keeps making like oh is it a bring your lover to work day oh is it and it's like Mm -hmm. we like we're not a thing oh and it's it's a bigger thing in the book because he's sleeping around too yeah he is yeah so it's it's, which i thought was so interesting yep i did not expect him to be sleeping around but then I don't know how you felt about this, but she basically told him, like, we are going to wear a condom because I don't know who you're with. Mm -hmm. And until you tell me, like, or until you make the choice to stop seeing other women, then we're we're not anything Mm -hmm. like, you know. And so he she was like, I hope that you you respect me enough that when you get to that point, you're willing to tell me what choice you want to make. And he's like, yeah, sure. So Mm -hmm. then they have a moment where they're at her house and she's not wearing a condom and he says i made my choice and it's supposed to like be like wow wow he's not sleeping with other women choosing you he did it he chose me wait slay (laughs) oh my god period so (laughs) oh my god (laughs) i don't think he would say that so um it, it was such a big deal but i don't know he's in the book to me he was so infatuated with her, mm-hmm. but then he seemed very, like, dishonest about a lot of things. Because mm-hmm. when he would tell her things, they were always half truths. Like, oh yeah, about my band member Ollie, he has a sister Penelope, and they slept together when he was fourteen and she was nineteen. So in the book, Ugh. well, maybe in the sh- in the movie as well, but in the book, it, it was really highlighted that he really likes older women. Yeah, so it was kind of like a thing right which kind of also ties back into harry styles because wasn't that like a like a big thing for him too that's a crime (laughs) like 14 and 19 is a crime yeah and to me like it's it's weird because i don't know if you noticed it too because 14 and 19 was a big deal and even solen was like did you are you okay yeah no it was fine i wanted to do it it was good and 
then there was like a the parallel of her daughter who was an eighth grader who had a crush on a senior Mm -hmm. and she was like oh well maybe just talk about yourself and it's like Mm -hmm. yeah if my eighth dude i'm sorry like i (laughs) i oh god we're like on a soapbox today (laughs) let me let me just bring this up i work with eighth grade Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and sometimes Mm -hmm. they make little jokes like that Mm -hmm. and i'm just like no you're a child Mm -hmm. you do not even joke like that you don't you don't look at people like that if they are not in your age range Mm -hmm. because you're young and there is so much you don't know about the world. I'm not going to have you even like considering the fact that that would be a thing. Yeah. A possibility. So, it's yeah. not. Oh. Um, I guess I guess it didn't really hit me that, that hit me. I, I didn't realize how old he was for some reason. I don't know why. Um, because Solen was very like whatever about it wasn't she yeah she was she was kind of and she like, was with the whole is he liking a senior too uh-huh. and the fact that she was oh like yeah God. go for it uh-huh. it's like what because didn't she <sighs> say like oh you just gotta be yourself yeah i'm like girl that She's is eighth grade and she was sh- so young she mm-hmm. acted her age mm-hmm. so i was like that's really fucked up that you're you're telling your kid that mm-hmm. i don't know but then it goes to like no when I, they're, I agree when they're older that would be the same age gap that Jenna and Julian currently have. Yeah, but it's obviously different though. Yes. Because that's a child. She's 14. Exactly. And I, I think that's what this whole like book was trying to play. Like which ones are good and which ones are bad. Like, and why gaps. And why would you consider it a good and a bad thing for the age gaps? Mm-hmm. But well, to, she's me, underage. to me, it's just like it's about the mindset. It's about where you're at. But then when people do the whole like, well, they're mature for their age. It's like, no, don't say that shit. That shit gives me the ick, honestly. Mm-hmm. I um, do want to say that the movie focused a lot more on just Hayes and Solen. Mm-hmm. Like it never, it didn't really focus on the whole band aspect. It yeah. didn't really focus on any of that. Can I say, to me in the book, I found it interesting when Hayes would like take her to like these little groupy things, yeah. parties, whatever the fuck they were. And obviously the bandmates would be with women as well. Mm-hmm. And she would notice some of these girls are really young. Yeah. She would see that. And then she would feel like she had to yes. mother them, yep. you know? Um, I like that, but I wish it would have been more serious i don't know like it would have been taken more serious well i want to i feel like we're going to talk a lot about the ending of the book right now Mm -hmm. so can i just end with a movie like can i yes let's end the movie because that the movie and the book end very differently so in the movie their relationship people completely on the internet just destroy her her um credibility and stuff they're calling her just a disgusting mom well we're not gonna talk about the pool scene Oh yeah, because they were the in pool scene. Girl, I had to pause the movie. I literally screamed into my pillow. Yeah. So uh, they uh, in the movie, she follows Hayes and his band around and their groupies. Yeah, through like their whole tour. Yeah, and so they're in the pool and she's talking to the groupies, and the the band mates are there too, and she starts talking about how they met. Right. Yeah. And she's thinking like, oh, it was super cute. Like he met me and then he stopped the the performance and performed a song just for me. And one of the girls was like, oh, closer? Because that's like a bit, like that's a thing that they do. And then all, Oliver, I think it was, was like, oh yeah, we always pretend like it wasn't part of the show, but it's a we thing. do that. We do that. And so that was when they had their fight right she was just like and she ended it and honestly they weren't that deep in the relationship so it wasn't really that big of a deal but they did really care for each other he cared more for her because he was like are you ashamed of me Mm -hmm. and she was like yeah yeah (laughs) i'm glad she was honest though Mm -hmm. but even like they were over but then the news came out that there there was photos of them yeah and snuggled up and i i forget how it goes on but i i remember them meeting up i think it's because she talked to her friend and her friend was like go for it mm-hmm. and she was like i did feel something when mm-hmm. we were together and i want you to know that and, and I, I think it helped that everybody knew now right because yeah. now she didn't have anything to hide she had never told her daughter about mm-hmm. this relationship and so now that izzy found out because it was went viral 
Izzy was upset, but she wasn't as upset compared to the book. She was kind of just like, I wish she would have told me. It was funny because she was crying and she's like, is he at least the feminist? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Why would you let a feminist go? Oh, God. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, after all of that situation, then she goes back to Hayes and she's like, I lied. I do feel something. And their relationship works for a bit, but only because she deletes all social media and ignorance is bliss. Yeah. She doesn't know what the hell's going on. But also her front like the front of her house is like filled with paparazzi Mm -hmm. so it isn't until after she sees like how it's affecting her 16 year old daughter she's like i can't do this anymore Mm -hmm. and they break it off but in the movie he's just like she won't be in school in five years so can you like i i want this to work can you please consider this in five years Mm -hmm. and she's like yes but you have to promise me that if there's an opportunity in your life to move forward and find happiness you have to take it Mm -hmm. and in the movie five years pass and he goes to la Mm -hmm. and they just kind of look at each other and so lovingly and then it ends Mm -hmm. the end end. and i watched that it was funny because i watched that i was doing my makeup and i had to rewind because i was like that didn't fucking happen and also i fucking hated the wig they put on (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's 27 all right (laughs) i love the little scruff of the beard but i i watched that and i was like this didn't hit me this it was cute that is so fucking funny because you and i are opposites really yeah it did not hit me i felt more with the movie than i did i think because he was older i'm okay with them ending up together but to me it was just kind of like Okay, Girl. it's just another happy ending. I think it's because I love Anne Hathaway and I do too. Nicholas Ella G- 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 um, <laughs> um, No, I love them, and I don't want you to get it twisted. Like I do, really, really like the movie. Mm. But after the emotion I felt yesterday when With I the finished book? this book, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I, I, you were just numb. <laughs> I was numb, and all of a sudden I was like, oh okay they're just together Mm. i just i felt like it was a little unrealistic to me Mm. that he seemed like he had got bigger on his own he seemed like a soloist by the end of it. yeah i think he was a solo artist so to me it's just kind of weird that first of all no paparazzi followed him when he went the second time and then also (laughs) he's just kind of like we're cool now your daughter she's what what is she like 20 she just doesn't exist anymore (laughs) on her fucking Mm. on her Mm. like what the what what difference does that make now it's the same thing because people are gonna be like oh isn't that the same girl wow because she's in college now I know. right so yeah. i feel like i kind of get what it was mm. trying to do but i don't know five years is a long time it is a long time for you to wait so he for was somebody. 24 when they first met so then he was 29 mm-hmm. okay i'm sure she's 40 <laughs> she's 45 45 is just a number if 45 round down that's 40 up. round a little more down that's 30 round down yeah. you would round up because no. it's 45 <laughs> 45 29 well what if i came up to you and i'm like i met this 45 year old <laughs> he's um, a singer <laughs> he's a singer oh my god does he have tattoos dude everything he's harry styles oh my god 45 <laughs> I don't know how old Harry Styles is. Um, he's just I mean, perpetually you're, 20 to you're, me. Yeah, no, same. <laughs> um, I mean, you're older, so I feel like you could do whatever you want. No, but I would be I would be the August moon <laughs> in that situation. So I would be the younger and then, yeah. whoa, crazy. I but then feel like, like, I feel like the mindsets match more at that point. Because yeah. you've lived your 20s. Your frontal 20s lobe is, is developed. You're yeah. good. <laughs> My brain, rock solid. All wrinkly and shit. So like... I, I feel more, okay, that makes sense. But yeah. to me, it's just. 20s, I feel like you're still finding yourself, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why the ending of the movie just didn't. I guess it's because it wasn't as realistic to me like, as <laughs> the end of the book was. But I also, just to let you know, I, I feel very strongly about the end of the book. Like, kind of like gray line, I guess. Okay, I can't um, wait to so, hear this. So I do want to bring up. The book had that whole thing where he had slept with Penelope when he was 14 and she was 19. Penelope is the sister of one of the bandmates. And that bandmate apparently also had a thing for Hayes. So I feel like it's interesting that they had a conversation in the book where there's like no boundaries between these like 
band members like yeah. there would be moments where solen would be in the room with Hayes, or Hayes was in the shower or something and then oliver would just fucking walk in like yeah. no knocking or anything he would just bust in the room he's like oh you're here and and she noticed it she mm-hmm. was like this is different how yeah. he just walked in but then she would start or he would start kind of like hitting on her and um he would be like oh you're still with him yeah I could show you a better. And time. when she finally told Hayes, there was like a moment right before the band went on where uh Ollie basically was like, I know what you did with my sister. Like you you don't like sharing, you don't like that. And then um Hayes makes a comment like, You're just unhappy because I didn't want to do what you wanted to do. And it kind of insinuates that Ollie had a thing for Hayes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really I appreciate that um, Hayes was like afterwards was talking to um, Selene and was like, that's not my story to tell. Because I left a comment like you basically just hold the whole room. Yeah. So you can't just take it back now. You yeah. came out for him. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I appreciate that he didn't outright say it, but he did say it. But yeah. whatever. OK, he tried. But like. There, there is a lot going on. There's that situation, and then there was one situation with, um, they were in the hotel room, and you hear a girl crying in the hallway. Oh my god, yes. And um, is that near the end? This is like a halfway point. So, oh, okay, so okay. Len goes to the hallway, and she sees a 16 year old, and she's just like complete mom mode. Like, what, what's going on? What's happening? Do you yeah. need something? Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Can I just charge my phone? Like, I'm trying to get." to rory she was basically in the room with rory or no she she was was knocking for rory but then um solen was like but this is liam's room yeah and then she was just the girl didn't want to say anything Mm -hmm. and he was like okay hold on and so she goes inside she connects the phone for the girl and hayes is like just send her away like just it's not our issue Mm -hmm. so just send her away and then um she's like that's a 16 year old that's someone's daughter yeah. And then she uh, he says, well, do what you have to do, but don't have her in here because I can't have a teenage girl's DNA in my class or in my class. Well, uh, in my um vicinity, in my hotel room. And she's completely like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you? Yeah. And so she goes outside and she immediately like, you need to tell me the truth. How old are you? It's like, well, I'm 16. It's like, how old did you say you were? Well, I'm I said I was 18. And so she's just like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to judge you for anything, but do you need to go to the hospital? She's like, no, I don't think so. It's like, well, this is the time you need to go. So do you need to go? It's like, no. Okay, well, let me get you. It was like cab fare. And then Hayes ended up calling the front desk and they were going to get her like a courtesy car, whatever. And so then after that, the group is all sitting together and uh, Solen is like, that was a 16 year old that you guys fucked around with. Mm-hmm. And I trusted you with my daughter, not like a few days before. It's like, well, yeah, I would never do that to your daughter. And it's like, okay, but look at what it's like, look at what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. And um, she was really upset. And Hayes kind of pulled her to the side and was like, there was a situation in Japan where I was with, we were with these people and um, one of the ladies was with me and I was like, thanks so much, but I got an early call. So you could, if you could please go. Mm -hmm. And she took off all her clothes and stood at the rail of um, the hotel. hotel. And he basically had to like convince, cause he couldn't call or make a bigger situation cause he was scared she was going to jump. And so he ended up telling her to come into bed with him and he just hugged her until his security guard got there and got rid of her. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, yeah, that's so that's what that's what my life is like. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because I think that to me would have been my turning point where like, yes, our age gap were very different. But even our lives are very different because, yeah, to me, and I think to Solen too, had I gone through that and had I had children or worked with children, I think that would have had me more inclined to like check on if they're okay. But to Hayes, who's a celebrity, that was a, I can't get too close. Uh-huh. And that's, it's, it's crazy because they're, that, that they're two different people mm-hmm. in the way they handle situations. Yeah. They really didn't have much in common, huh? No, it was just sex. Uh-huh. 
It was, but I was fucking there for that shit. And I was there for it because a part of me wanted it to work. Mm -hmm. Because I really liked that this character who went through a divorce, never thought of themselves, was finally doing something for themselves. And I thought that was a beautiful thing because it kind of shows like very like womanhood. Like you, you do what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. and well even anne hathaway when she talks about this book she talks about it as like a woman's like sexual awakening which is great yeah that's a great thing but i just think that in the book it really pushed more the fact that like (laughs) how do i say this you can't push some you can't will something into existence just with love I do think that is like a really big thing. Love is an, a very important thing. But you yeah. do also have to realize that it's not just you and the other person. There's the world. Mm-hmm. There's like so many things. And if you're a mother, there's your children you have to consider. Because when you become a mother, it's not just about you anymore. Sadly. But like to me, it's like do you think a lot. Do you think that they wanted to put like love above everything else? But I mean, even in the beginning, it's not like it was love in the beginning. I I do think that's kind of what it became. But it's that like, I don't want it to seem like I'm like (laughs) anti-love. But I I, what I'm trying to push is like at at the end of the day, there's so many other factors to consider. Some people do prioritize love though i remember there was this one time when i was in uh school doesn't matter what grade but we would always start the day with like a like a question to debate right yeah and there was this one question that was like say you love someone like they're perfect for you 100 percent. nothing is wrong with this person um but your family doesn't like this person for you Mm. would you still marry this person and you know the class was very divided well i feel like most people were saying love right just choose love wow but there were those people that were saying well how yeah like it's love now but eventually like you have to involve your family Mm -hmm. in in this in this life of that you're building and it's crazy to me because like every family situation is different but i'm very close to my family and i feel like if i was in a situation like that i think i would choose my family Mm -hmm. but i don't know because it because, you know, I haven't met someone like that. So who knows? Maybe like next week I'll be like, fuck them. <laughs> I you never like, liked them anyway. <laughs> you were like, you know what? Choose love, guys. Choose love. But to me, like, I can't see myself choosing the like, the love of part of my life over the people that I have loved my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Solen did. She chose her kid who she has loved for that kid's whole life Mm -hmm. over someone that she loved for a few months. Yeah. And I, and I don't, I don't put her down for that. Like, I'm glad she did what she did. And I I feel sad for her because I wish that it could have worked. But at the end of the day, she was realistic in the sense that like, I don't want to fuck up my daughter's life just because I want to be with someone. And I'm sorry. And I feel like, I feel like it would have been, I don't know, because I do think the ending was sad, but I feel like it would have been even more heartbreaking had they actually had more in common. Mm -hmm. Like even just like life perspectives, you know, just I I felt like they had more in common or not more in common. I guess I felt more chemistry in the movie, even though they didn't really talk much about their childhoods Mm -hmm. because there was just like the way that they interacted. But the way that they interacted in the book was always sex. Mm hmm. It was all, and then how would have you felt if you knew that the person you were gonna end up with, the first comment they made was like, "Oh yeah, I, I want to fuck that mouth." That part made me so uncomfortable yeah. because Solen basically told Hayes, "Oh, I remember when I first saw you, and I thought that's the face I want to sit on," mm-hmm. and I thought that was so weird because, so you're saying that it immediately started with lust? Yeah, I thought you, but I'm then, so confused. But then they were totally okay with it because she felt the same way. Like she also was lustful the state the first time. Yeah. You know what part I fucking hated? What part? The part in the book where Izzy took off her braces and Hayes saw her without her braces and was like, That's your mouth. Yeah. And then it, in the book and it, it's it's funny because the book would break up sections and then when there was like a new section break, it was like time had passed. Mm-hmm. It was one paragraph where he had said that, looked at Solen 
and then it the last sentence was like and we never mentioned it again it's like that's yeah i remember reading that and thinking that's really weird such a so, weird thing to say so to me like i i felt like age gap who knows maybe there's a book out there where i'm gonna be because we read birthday girl and i was super into that shit i wasn't into that but i was so. <laughs> but i was into that shit more so because and we'll talk about this in later episodes because there's something i want to talk about with you that we talked about for the beginning of our episodes mm -hmm. but the separation of like literature and entertainment versus real life yeah you know so in literature and entertainment i could see, i enjoy this book mm -hmm. but in real life i wouldn't want this for anyone yeah i mean this is the same thing when we read dark romance mm -hmm. like we could enjoy it but not actually want that in real life yep how did you feel about the way the book ended i cried a lot really dude i was i was so confused i couldn't believe that was the ending i no neither could <laughs> i so like okay i think i started crying at one specific line oh god um i thought the last line was really sad so i don't know what oh, line shit. I'm, I'm not even there oh god you're like 100 pages before the end no literally i think it was 100 pages before the end i think the thing that really got me was like two-thirds into this book and it was the first time he confesses because it's literally just them at her workplace mm -hmm. and she's over here just making jokes um at his expense and he's like whatever i'm fucking leaving um have a good day love you goodbye and she turns and she's like, what did you say? And he's like, nothing. I didn't say anything. Fuck. I didn't say that. Goodbye. And he leaves. Mm -hmm. And it just really hit me because he's 20 yeah, and she's 40. yeah, And she's over here kind of like, it's not that big a deal. And it's like, this kid is so devoted to you. And the fact that you're so flippant on this mm -hmm. relationship and he's over here like fucking beck and call like he will drop shit for you mm -hmm. and you're not even willing to do that for him and then the when she finally confesses i was like fucking finally this is what i wanted mm -hmm. and like i was happy because like she even said it like the reason i held on to it so long was because i wanted to make sure i was in love with you and not the idea of you yeah but then by the end of it she is just kind of like she sees how much it's def um, affecting her daughter because she's an eighth grader and people are being super gross at school and mm -hmm. everything like that and um she ends up choosing her daughter and he when they break up um he there's like a situation where she gets a lot of hate online and she just wants to turn the the world off mm -hmm. and she like turns off her phone for a day but then he like uh, apparently had sent her several messages. She calls him and he's like, don't you ever fucking do that. I was so scared that you had done something. Mm -hmm. And by that point, I think it's already over. So they meet up one last time. No, it's over phone call, I think. Yeah. They I mean, were supposed to meet at France. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I can't choose this over my family. And he's like crying on the phone. He's mm -hmm. like, please don't do this to me. I'm literally in France. Like, I, I'm so far away from you. I can't do this. Don't end things on the phone with me. I want us to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So when she goes to his house or when um he goes to her house, he's just kind of like, I quit. I quit the band. Yeah. So he's willing to change his whole life for her. And it hurt me when because they have like sex. But then afterwards, she's like, get dressed and go work, mm. work. <laughs> yeah. And he, it's so sad because he's like getting dressed while crying. And he's just like, please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. Mm -hmm. She's like, you need to choose yourself. Like you have so much in your life. You can't give this up because of me, you mm -hmm. know, but he's like, but I want to be with you. This is all I want. She's like, you don't know that. And so then when he leaves, um, the end of the book basically says every single day he, he was, sends her messages yeah. that are kind of like um oh my gosh why can i not see it i miss you i'm thinking of you i still love you so but every then, fucking day he would send her a message for months mm -hmm. but then one day they stopped long long before i had stopped loving him so he kind of moved on before her right mm -hmm. yeah well, I feel like it must have also been difficult for her to move on when he was texting her every day. Yeah. But she didn't block him. She so didn't block him. I feel so bad for him. I feel bad for both of them because, like, 
to me, it makes me sad. This kind of goes against what I just said, but it makes me sad because they couldn't choose themselves over mm-hmm. anything else. Mm-hmm. But then I think if I was a mother and I saw one of my kids who was joyful and youthful and loved life turn to hollow, hollow, I would also choose my kid, but yeah. it would suck. Yeah. So. Well, would you? I would choose my Izzy's kids. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I would choose because, like, it's kidding. funny because, like, even sometimes, even sometimes at work, I I choose like I'm okay with sacrificing a few hours of my life if it means the kids can do this. Okay. Like you know, and that, I know that's such a small thing compared. But yeah, you're you're showing that you're still willing to. Like sometimes, as an adult you have to be okay with putting others first yeah. because I don't want to take away from what they could gain in their life. And that's kind of what she did for Hayes too. It's like, I don't want to take away from your future happiness. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to experience life, Mm -hmm. you know, as a 20 year old. He was so young. 20. That's way too young. young. Do you think the ending was satisfying? It was sad. I was it, it was sad it's fine <laughs> <laughs> i think um i think to me it just felt more realistic mm. had it been an actual celebrity now first of all i don't think fans would react that poorly mm-hmm. I, I, at least i don't think so i don't know i have no idea to the be world honest surprise <laughs> yeah exactly i have no idea um but think about it the, their scandal, their scandal was a little bit different. Because wasn't it a picture of her like being eight? Yeah, she was eight. And eight. so that's, you know, another layer of mm-hmm. embarrassment on, on her end. Yep. I, um, it made me sad because in this story, Solen doesn't get a happy ending for herself. No, she doesn't. And... Does she ever date anybody else? We'll never know. Who knows? It hurt too the part where Izzy basically told her daughter, like, I'm sorry, I'm not strong enough. Izzy told her daughter? Or sorry, Izzy told her mom that when they were driving home. Mm. She was like crying and she's like, I know you love him and I know that he's really good to you, but I'm not strong enough. Mm -hmm. That was so sad. Poor Izzy. I mean, she's so young. Yeah. And I, I don't know, because in this story, maybe in the future, no, well, no, by the way it ended, it, he. Well, I actually looked into it because I, I thought maybe there was a second book. So I looked into it and there's this, um, you know how on Goodreads you can ask authors questions? Yes. So somebody asked the author, Robin Lee, uh, would you ever make a sequel to The Idea of You? And this was six years ago. Damn. And she wrote. You know what? I've been thinking about it a lot lately, but um, I just want to get other books done first and then maybe revisit. Maybe. So. I wouldn't mind if they revisited. But I feel like now with the success of the movie, I'm sure she's probably cooking something up. Yeah. I could see it. Her making a sequel now five years in the future. Because mm-hmm. it, it still won't be easy. No, it won't. Be but either. it'll have different hurdles. Um, but then in the book, she's going to have to address a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Like there's the whole still the Penelope thing's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Also, the the bandmates. Well, mostly just Oliver. Oliver's weird. Mm-hmm. Just weird towards Hayes. He's very like possessive. Yep. I wonder how. That oh, but he's out. not in the band anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Awkward. Just kidding. Who cares? Okay, at least Liam from One Direction is in August. <laughs> oh my god, that man could just bounce around. <laughs> um, what do you think you would rate this book? Book and then rate the movie. Okay, um, movie is easy because I feel like the movie I overall enjoyed it more. Mm-hmm. To me, he didn't feel too young. I don't know. I guess when you brought up the whole like changing thing. I get why you would think he felt young, but I was just glad that they made him 24. And yeah. I like the idea of them, yeah, uh, yeah <laughs> of them waiting 
a couple years to see if like this is really what you want but i don't fucking believe that mr august moon himself stayed single this entire time there's no fucking way Mm -hmm. not with that pretty face Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i like that i think it's cute i love how they like looked at each other at the end give it a four out of five okay the book that one's hard because I feel like I did enjoy some parts of it, but then some parts were kind of cringe. Like some of the dialogue was kind of cringe to me. Um, didn't love that their relationship was so focused on sex. Like, yeah, yeah, you can build all, some love off of that, but I just wish that it would have been a little bit more impactful. Um, but the ending, I feel like even though it was sad, it does make sense so why she would let him go it's almost like a sacrifice right like she's just like you know what i'm gonna let you go you go you go live your life Mm -hmm. um which honestly just shows that she does love him (laughs) oh wait yeah um i don't know i think i would i'm kind of still thinking about what i would rate the book but i feel like i would give it like a high two or a three Okay. Like around there. I think we're both similar then. Because for the movie, I did enjoy it. But I guess the ending to me, it was just too convenient. You know? Yeah. Because I know Harry Styles. If he waited five years, people would be on his ass. (laughs) Well, I just feel like people would be like very um, observant. Like, wait, why did you wait five years? That's weird. Oh, that's grooming. Because that it's. But they didn't talk, though. I know, but, you know, it, it, there's going to be issues that follow that, mm. is what I mean. Okay. So, to me, it was just kind of like, oh, it just worked out. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, but I, I enjoyed the movie a lot, because I really like both actors. And I just uh, liked that it didn't have to focus on all the little things. I liked that it didn't bring up the Penelope thing, because I wasn't a fan of that. I didn't get that, to be honest, because it was like not it was a big deal but it wasn't treated like a big deal no so i'm glad it didn't bring it up Mm -hmm. um movie i think i would give it a four as well um book so i really enjoyed reading the book Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it didn't have issues i think that i wasn't sold on the love story between Hayes and solen i liked it i thought it was cute but at the end of the day, I don't feel like Hayes was that honest of a person. There was even a situation where they crash into one of his old lovers and it looks just like Solen. Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about so, that. So th- there's like so much. And he mentions it. He's like, I have a lot of baggage. Like everyone does. So mm-hmm. you knew it coming into it. But I, I just. <sighs> I guess I just didn't like the execution of certain parts, even with him just always getting mad at her. Like, you're letting them win. You're letting the fans win. And Mm -hmm. it's like, no, you don't understand the whole situation. But the ending did hurt me a lot Mm -hmm. as well. But I guess I'm a little more okay with that ending because of, like, it's funny because, like, even though she said she loved him and not the idea of him, at the end of the day, it was just the idea of him that she liked. Yeah. Yeah so because she didn't fight for him yeah but who knows if there's a book too it's gonna be weird though because she's gonna have to make a sequel of the book and not a sequel of the movie yeah so that'll she be changes the, the whole first book yeah <laughs> she writes it uh but that being said i think the book i would give it like a 3.4 out of five because you like the idea of the idea of you thank you <laughs> Wow, we talked forever about this one. Yeah, we did. That was like 80 minutes. I don't know how many hours that is. It's Sunday. <laughs> I can't do math right now. An hour and 20. <laughs> no, it's not. It's an oh, hour. wait, is it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, an hour's 100 <laughs> minutes. So that doesn't work. <laughs> what can I say? I'm getting better at math. I'm coming for your crown. Dude, I love that. <laughs> um, 
Well, to everyone who's watching, thank you so much. Well, if you're listening to us in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on, thank you so much. If you can please leave a rating of five stars, because that helps so much. And honestly, you can be doing it right now because it takes like two seconds to do. Giving us five stars helps a lot. And if you can also just leave a review and let us know what book you want us to talk about next. Honestly, I had so much fun reading this book. So any bangers are accepted. Um, if you want to support us and you have, oh, sorry. And also if you want to help us be a little more well-known, the best type of exposure is through word of mouth. So if you can just let people know about us, I feel like that would be great. Um, if you want to support us and you have a little bit of money, what can they do, Yahira? So we do have a Patreon and at the moment there's not a whole lot on there, but don't worry. Don't worry. We're Summer's cooking. Coming. We're cooking things up. Okay. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Literally. No, I'm just kidding. We're cooking. <laughs> we're frying things up. <laughs> we become the cook fix. <laughs> Wait. TM, 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 don't take that. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like bad. So that's why it needs fixing. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, so we're thinking about things that we could put on there. But right now our Patreon just serves as a way for our listeners to really show us that mm. you appreciate our content you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix but if you don't want the commitment of monthly you can find us on coffee which is ko-fi.com slash the book fix or buymeacoffee.com slash the book fix if you are watching us on youtube thank you so much if you can like the video if you can comment let us know um what you want us to read next and subscribe that would be great and you can also hit that notification bell we post every tuesday and thursday Thank you. Um, if you want to support us on social media, we do have an Instagram and threads at the Book Fix Pod, T H E B O O K F I X P O D. And we do have a TikTok at the Book Fix, T H E B O O K F I X. And might as well follow us on Goodreads because it's popping off in there. Oh my God, you guys have no ex- idea how <laughs> excited we get when we see that people are following our Goodreads because what was our goal? Like three people? Three. We have like four now. Thank you so much. We feel we've like done it. we feel like we've made it we can retire now (laughs) thank you so much um if you want to support us on goodreads it is at the book fix thank you so much so why don't we read a positive and negative review of this book okay what do you want to read whatever i'll read the positive it's written by you (laughs) this is from Corey's corner who gave it a five out of five, they wrote, I am definitely licking my wounds today with this book. So heartbreakingly good. Definitely a five star read. What I loved about this book is the reverse age gap. This is my first older woman, younger man story. Harry Styles, whom I love, is the muse in this boy band and the object of Solene's affection. Although he pursued her and Although he pursued her and at 20 years old, this book gave me butterflies and full on feels. It was real life and just so painfully tragic, but so beautiful. Hayes Campbell stole my heart and made me squirm. He was the personification of sexy and so masculine beyond his years. The way he always said hi made me melt. I didn't want this to end, but alas, all good things must at some point. I want to read one, but I don't want it to be the one. Okay. Somebody wrote, Harry, I'm so sorry. They keep doing this to you. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fucking oh funny. Oh my God. Anyway, but the, <laughs> but the one star review I want to read yeah. comes from Lynn. And they, they wrote, I stayed up all night reading for this? <laughs> F this book. Seriously. The one time I don't read reviews and this is what I get? Hours of reading and for what? an abrupt ending that ending ruined the entire book mostly because i made myself put up with the fact that it was long-winded and unrealistic but hey it's a romance and it's gonna have a good ending no 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 it does not it literally just ends this book was written three years ago and that's it her what this was written three years ago, and that's it her only one i'm a little peeved that my quote unquote friends recommended this book to me to be honest Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh my God. Do you think that Harry Styles can sue? Can you sue for this? Probably not, because it's mm. not really. It's not really you. I can't imagine someone who wrote a song like "Watermelon Sugar High" would sue me. I can't imagine it. Why would they sue you? Are you? Are you-
Are, they saying, Co- are you confessing wait, something? I'm kind of cooking something up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're like, maybe, but not yet. I don't think you would. Go for it, Harry. <laughs> Just try. No, never mind. I don't. I never want to come for Harry's No, yeah, me neither. I would be so scared. It's like coming for Taylor Swift. That's a death sentence. <laughs>